Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Tammy Manis are here with me. We're delighted that you could join us. It's a new year. You may well be making new year resolutions. Um, you might want to share some of them with us if it's uh, football related. Uh, certainly on the evidence of yesterday, more than a few of you have an opinion. So you can share that in our feed and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you download the PLZ Soccer app, you can also in the submission section post us a message and we'll read out as many as we possibly can. And thank you to so many people who actually uh, posted so many nice words about uh, Frank McGarvey and our tribute to the Celtic legend. And of course, I think it's fair to say St Mirren legend on his passing on New Year's Day. It was lovely to see so many tributes. So thank you to each and every one of you. And of course, lots of people warmly recalling their memories of Pelly, uh, the greatest of all time, if you're on this side of the studio. Um, and as one person sent me a message and said, you know, sadly, the passing of Pelly. Messi was only the goat for four weeks <laughs> before the whole thing um, readjusted itself. But listen, we've had the joy of Messi. We've had the joy of Pelly. What we haven't had, Ruffy, is the joy of answering yesterday's quiz question because I should have actually given the answer at the end, but you keeled over. Yeah. So I actually started yeah. to panic and thought, is yeah. he joking or is this <laughs> no, the no. end and I have to phone Tam regularly? No, no, as you, if you've watched Gone With The Wind, uh, saying that Gone With The Wind is tomorrow is another day. Yes. So a wee bit better today with uh, feeling fresh, but I did get under the circumstances, I did get the answer to it. You have to did you know me. genuinely? Yeah, you have to remind me of the question is again. All right. Don't tell me the answer. Okay, uh, the question was, uh, who was the o don't you answer it at the moment, well, Steve? Yeah. Uh, Tam's got it. Who was the only Scot to appear in Escape to Victory? Only Scot? Mm. The only Scot uh, uh, in the team. Gordon McQueen. So. The reason I know the answer to that was I was nearly in that picture. No, were you? Because I was at, we played, Scotland were playing East Germany at the end of the season. And this particular person, who's the answer to the question, was asked to go with two or three other Ipswich boys. And it was the goalkeeper was, was it Laurie Civil? I think the name rings a bell. Yeah. John asked me that I want to go and I said, nah, I've been away from home for a long time and it's another three or four weeks. So I turned him down. You turned down the movie? I turned down the, to go to the movie, yeah. To the thing because I wanted yeah. to go up the road. Is there no real end to your stupidity, <laughs> Ruffy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we've been away in tour for yeah. a long time and he's, I said to him, how long is the production going to be? And he says it'll be now four or five weeks. <coughs> just <coughs> hanging about doing stuff yeah. and that. But he never told me Pelly was in it at that time. Yeah. He just wanted me to go, be the goalkeeper. So give me the answer. John Work. John Work. It was indeed John Work. And I'll give you this option uh, now before we go to today's quiz question. And Tam and I would obviously debate this as well. But if I gave you the choice... <coughs> To be in Escape to Victory with the likes of, um, I think uh, Mike Summerby was in it, yeah, Pelly's in it, it. Yeah. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's in it, Bobby yeah. Moore's in it. Big German boy's in it, um, big centre-half. Right, I can't remember his yeah. name, but there's a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah. Uh, Russell Osmond's in it. Russell Osmond's in it, yeah. Yeah. he had a big partner, yeah. Yeah, so if I had to give you the choice, you are in it as one of the goalkeepers. Uh, but Rocky's in goals. Yeah, but Rocky could be in, you could play a German. No, I was to advise him. Oh, were you? I advise him on free kicks. And yeah, but with your looks at the time, think about, <laughs> think about what, what would you know about free kicks and corners? But uh, if you, uh, what, what, once you got there, if you think yeah. about it at oh, the time, been great. you would have been, you could easily have been a German goalkeeper because you get that blonde hair. Mm. Yeah, you could easily the, the actual been. German goalkeeper was a German goalkeeper. Again, I can't remember his name, but he was, right, he was okay. a top German goalkeeper. So I'm giving you the choice. Right. Suddenly, the guy who's the director says, look, Ruffy, I've got a part for you in Escape to Victory. You got there with Warky Boy and you, you're, you're, you've got a part in the, and you've got a few lines in the, the movie. Or you coach D. Hepburn in, <laughs> in Gregory's Girl. Well, I've already coached D. You know, prior to it. Prior to yeah, it. But I'm giving you the option. Yeah. What are you doing? Tom Fitwell. Tom Fitwell. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? You're doing, you're doing Escape to yeah. Victory no, or I, Gregory's I enjoyed Girl. my time with D. Yeah. You know, so... But I think Escape to Victory might have just swayed it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Wow, that is a yeah. big call, that, isn't it? Because he's already done the thing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, the movie. Gone. Yeah, so uh, big call, Ruffy. Anyway, what about today's question? Well, bearing in mind we're going to talk about Juventus a little later on um, because of their financial woes and the investigation into that once great side. 
when was the last time Juventus won the Champions League? That's our question for today, um, because the, the board, including Pavel Nedved, had already resigned uh, just at the tail end of last year. Um, but there's an ongoing investigation, and uh, I think it's going to be worrying times. Anyway, apart from that, hi to Tommy Adams. Happy New Year to you, Tommy, and thank you for your support in 2022. He's back for 2023, as so many other people are back with us. Uh, and thank you very much indeed for showing your support. Yeah, happy you, New Year, everyone. Yeah, from me, I wasn't in yesterday, obviously, but hope yeah. everyone has a cracking year. Yeah, fingers crossed we have a, a good year, Ruffy, and uh, obviously you're fit and well. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was a real blip in the calendar because yeah. you've had a couple of days where you've just not been 100% yesterday. I thought I was, it was touch and go with you. Yeah, I, was, uh, I wasn't feeling particularly well. As I explained to everybody on the show, and a lot of people have probably had it, it's an ear infection. I think it's a hopes an ear infection. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, you just lose, uh, you lose your balance. Yeah. And uh, it certainly happened 20 minutes before the show, but I, I recovered. Yeah. Uh, I was a wee bit upset, you know, when I said that I might be struggling to even on the phone to Tom right away. Yeah, you know, I was. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was like a button. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, <laughs> this I, is it. I, I, I know you would. I know you would have noticed it, but because you had a dizzy spell. Um, but when you eventually said that you were able to start the show at four o'clock, if you'd have looked to the left, the curtain was just moving as Tom <laughs> went back out the door because <laughs> he was there. The so back signal come up. Yeah, that was him. He was there. He was ready for it. Anyway, you're all right, and we're ready to talk football, and we're ready to talk. Of course, you can tell it's a. You can tell it's a, a weekend of the old firm, the Edinburgh Derby and various other managers who are under pressure elsewhere in the Scottish Premiership um, because everybody is still arguing about it and still having their say. We'll start off, we're going to talk about football. We have mentioned yesterday, just for the people who obviously make it their life's mission uh, to try and get this tip for tat situation, we did um, offer our opinion uh, unequivocally on uh, the um, unsavoury songs certainly on uh, uh, the situation with the lack of respect for the minute's silence and and throw in, which we didn't mention, but obviously uh, the last thing you want to hear is a, a fan being hit with a missile, potentially a bottle. Um, but as Ruffy said yesterday, hopefully uh, the authorities have CCTV cameras and they can pick up uh, anyone who really has misbehaved. It's it, well, We've said our piece on it. So we're going to move <laughs> on to what's been happening today and let's deal uh, with Celtic, who are quite simply looking at the situation. They're not happy with VAR uh, and the way uh, that the referees seem to totally disregard the need to look at that incident with Conor Golson. Um, now, there's two ways to look at this, Ruffy. One is, should it have been looked at? The second part of the argument, which I think is what we made yesterday, was it's not a case of a referee explaining the law to everyone. It's a case of the consistency in decisions on what should be looked at and what is deemed, mm -hmm. you know, hands in an unnatural position that, uh, you know, is worthy of a penalty. Yeah, I, th I think it's a bit of both. You know, I think it's the consistency bit that a lot of the managers and the players can't get their head round. Uh, I thought they were very, very quick to come out and defend Willie Collum. Uh, and tell everybody how the, this rule works, you know, and the, I think the diagram that we were all given that if you put your hand up at, to stop the ball hitting your face, you're OK. You know, that seems to be deemed uh, as that's all right. But there are other occasions that there have been similar things that have happened and they haven't explained it. You know, so if they're going to do it with just because it's Rangers versus Celtic, they need to start doing it with everybody. And, and that is all be wise to how they react to it. But uh, if that is the way they interpret the rule, if somebody hits the ball at your face and you put your hand up to protect your face, then fair enough. You know, but uh, it has to be more consistent. Yeah, um, and I think that's the key to it all, Tom. It doesn't matter about, you know, everybody's got their uh, opinion on it, whether they think it should have been looked at, whether they think it was indeed a penalty. Um, and the referees have come out and, and obviously what you've got is this quick release on the IFAB ruling on it. But that's not what everybody's upset about. And I think Celtic are putting the point across, as Ruffy's mentioned, listen, there are penalties. I mean, I'm looking back at Michael Smith's handball in the game Hearts Celtic mm -hmm. in the early days of VAR. <clears throat> there are decisions which have been made that have left everybody bemused. That one, I thought that Willie Collum was a stonewall certainty to let John Beaton look at it, but the ultimate last line in it should have been John Beaton's call. 
Yeah, listen, I think it's the consistency of the decision. I think that Celtic have been on the end of a couple this season that they're not happy about, clearly. Um, it's, it's stuck in their throat. This is obviously another one. Um, I thought at the time it was a penalty kick. I think his hands are up and it's an unnatural position that hits his hand. I was very surprised that Be uh, John Beaton never went over and had a look at it on the screen. He didn't, uh, and now he obviously was roughly says the referees are coming out and explaining it, but I think Celtic were at the end of one. I don't know if it was at home to Ross County or home to Dundee United, where it was O'Reilly. Yeah. Put his hand up. Very soft. Yep. Come up, ball came in, and, and it was, his, hand, his hand's in a natural position. It hits his hand, and, and the penalty was given. So I think that Celtic and Celtic supporters are rightfully annoyed uh, at some of the decisions this season. I know the referees have explained it, but there's got to be a consistency across the board. This is a penalty and this isn't. <coughs> it's got to be black and white, there can't be grey areas, and there's too many grey areas at the minute, and too many inconsistencies with VAR. Yeah, I think Blackwood Music who says, <coughs> IFAB ruling is clear, move on. Um, well, you've actually just timed it perfectly, because quite simply that's what we're talking about, which is the IFAB ruling may be clear, but the interpretation of it is certainly not the way it's being utilised on a regular week-to-week -week basis. And um, I think a number of clubs have been really peeved when penalty decisions have been called. Uh, and it's not a consistency, because we're only talking last week, I mean, Callum Davison was incandescent with rage with it. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's happened in two or three times. The, the one that I, I, really baffles me is the, the, the penalty <coughs> decisions that are given when a defender's got his hand behind his back, you know, and the ball's hitting yeah. behind him, you know, and they're given penalties for that. You know, I, I love to explain that. that. Who was the, who was the, the hand the, of the weekend that, again. That yeah. was a, I, I think that was a, a Celtic player again, that, the, that it hit the back of his hand out here. Um, yeah. Was it Burnley Bay or was it Taylor or somebody? somebody, was it somebody, like that, somebody like yeah. That, yeah. Um, not that, by the way, and, and I, I must emphasise, this is not about, it's it's probably one of those things that's highlighted to a greater extent because it's involving Rangers and Celtic, but there are a number of managers who are oh, well yeah. peeved with the way the whole thing is being interpret, uh, interpreted at the moment. It was always going to be this way, Ruffy, because as a country, we knew that it was never going to solve the problems. It was going to try and get the percentage of them correct. Yeah, you're right. And as we spoke about it before the Rangers game, we, we said, please don't be the last minute. Please don't be a decision that you've got to make that wins or loses that game. Fortunately, it wasn't, you know, that. Uh, but you have to talk about it because it's there. And if everybody has to be enlightened how this rule is going to work, then they've got to come out with things like that but I'm sure there'll be something at the weekend that a manager will go explain that to me Yeah. how did you give a penalty there and, and they're quite justified now yeah I don't think it's any more valid because it involves Rangers and Celtic of course a lot of people will say well you know the implications of it financially for two teams who are going for uh, the title head to head um, is there for all to see but it's no less legitimate if it was Motherwell against St Mirren it's something that all the managers in every press conference I'm going into post-match you're getting managers just totally and utterly perplexed by it all and again I mentioned something I mentioned uh, you know when we were before we went for the break at, um, uh, for Christmas which is quite simply down south <clears throat> there, is, there, is, there is a speed to the decision uh, and over and above that, what they're doing is VAR is only advising the referee. The referee has to make that call and make it quick. And that certainly didn't even happen in the, the Hearts Hibs game. My God, we waited. Oh. We waited four minutes mm. for potentially offside and then potential penalty. Yeah, far too long. That was that was a joke actually. Um, you know, I was watching the game and I, I couldn't believe. You know, straight away, it's either a goal or a penalty. You know, I don't think it was a foul on the Hibs player. I think they were, I think he gave it initially gave a foul against. The Hearts player for a little tug on Joe Newell, which I didn't think was a foul. And then you're looking at the offside, and then you're looking at the potential penalty kick in four or five minutes. And there's nobody in the stadium can see what knows what's happening. There's no big screens to talk you through it or to, to look at. And in England, I think they've got that. But no, it's far too long. Uh, I watched Brentford Liverpool the other, the other night, and there was a lot of contentious decisions which were done quickly, yeah. uh, pretty quickly. And uh, and that was that was VAR at its best because he's got every big decision right, in my opinion. But you know, you know, if you're taking four or five minutes, you know, you're, and you're playing injury time, you're playing. You're, no, games are lasting two hours. Yeah. You know, so they've got to, they've got to sort that out quickly. The referees. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Bartholomew has just mentioned there. He said, you know, uh, the, the the key element here is quite simply that the match officials. It's not. It's not they're corrupt. It's just they're poor. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, you, they've got to make a decision. Obviously, we're talking about the with the beaten column. You know, call Willie Collins. Obviously, in his ear, has said you don't need to look at that. Yeah. 
He's got a bit clear nobody's here. Here's the rule. Uh, he's obviously said, that. He said, look, you don't have to have a look at it. Here is the rule. He's put his hand up to his face to defend it. So carry on. Yeah. Um, overall, Tom, we haven't had your thoughts on it, but in the end, it finished 2 2. I think Celtic potentially going out out of there, maybe not playing their best, their manager's happy. Equally so, I think Michael Beale's happy because he's starting to see that line of progress. Yes, starting with, starting with Rangers, it's the best that I've seen them for a number of weeks, I think probably since they beat Aberdeen 4-1 uh, under Van Bronckhurst. I think they played really well uh, and you could argue they maybe deserve to win the game, the chances at 2-1, to kill it at 3-1. Celtic, the poorest I've seen them in a while. I thought they were really poor um, defensively, down in the wide areas, all over the place. Um, Cameron Carter Vickers, excellent game. I think he held them together at the back. But when you can go to Ibrox and play poorly and still come away with a draw, I think that's a great sign for Celtic. So I think both will be reasonably happy. I think, well, I think Celtic will obviously be very happy. I think the nine point gap plus 20 goals, goal difference, the league's done. The Rangers had to win. But I think if you're a Rangers fan, you'd be happy with the performance. I thought first five, ten minutes, I thought Celtic <coughs> might run over the top of them, but I thought Rangers grew into the game and in the second half they were the better side. So, no, I, I think that both sets of fans can be reasonably happy. Yeah, uh, the big question, of course, is uh, how many players will come in. Uh, Celtic have been quick off the mark with a, a couple of signings. Will there be more on the way? But as far as Rangers are concerned, uh, how many do you think Michael Beale needs in this window? How many do you think realistically he will get in this window? And who does he rate that's going to stay on our Ibrox for the long term? The manager had his say on that very issue after the game. I want John Suter fit, I want Ridvan fit, I want Yanis Hadji, Tom Lawrence, Kamar Roof, Antonio Kolek. That'll be a start. And if I can add two or three more to it, then we've got a second team as good as that first team we had out there today. And then it's game on in terms of inside the building, game on. You have to earn your shirt. I think the last few weeks people have played regardless. None of you know whether I fancy these players or not because they're the players I've got. They've gone and got the results up until today. They were three minutes away from getting a big performance and I think that should maybe move people's minds a bit. No surprise, I think, Michael Beale just saying there, look, it's a clean slate for everybody. You've got your chance to take it. You can impress me. You'll have a future. Yeah, I think that's interesting that he made the point he made there that he's that's the only players he's got at the minute, you know. So there might be players that he's playing that he doesn't fancy, but he's no one else. Um, personally, I think Morelos is one of them. I think he's been forced to play him. Um, I think that if Cholak had been fit and, re and ready, he, Morelos wouldn't have played the last few games. But I think once once Cholak is back fit and he's he's, he's edging closer, obviously, he full fitness. Then I think Morelos is about the team. Um, I think that Rangers do need the do need the Ranger players back. They need you need competition for places. Celtic have got that. I think Celtic have got that in, in, in abundance. You know, the players coming in, you've got to play well to, to, to keep your jersey Rangers. I've not really got that at the minute with injuries, so they need to strengthen in key areas. I will ask you again, do you sell Kent and Morelos in this window? On, on, the, on, the, on the evidence of the weekend, I, I, I wouldn't sell Kent. I'd keep him. I'd try and get him on a, new, on a new deal. I would punt Morelos tomorrow. I think he's, I think he's conditioning. His fitness is a disgrace. And, I think that, uh, as I said, I don't think he'd be playing. I don't think he'd be playing if, if Rangers had another reasonable option. Uh, I think he's cheating the supporters, cheating the club with the condition he's in. Uh, he's, he's miles off it, he's yards off it in terms of pace and fitness. And Bar the two headers that he might have scored, he was totally inept in the, in the game. Yeah, uh, Greg says, Peter, can you ask Ruffy to explain again um, this, how the Sakala penalty wasn't a penalty? And I, I, just, I just read that out, Robbie, because you know, that's still, the joy of this you, game. You know, I still thought it was a reckless lunge. There's no doubt about that. And yeah. when a defender makes uh, a reckless lunge, if there's any connection in any part of the, the opposition's body, that's a penalty. I just thought he went in. I don't think he touched him at all. I, I thought it was Sakala's boot that went onto his boot. Yeah. You know, I don't think it was Starfield's boot that went onto his. I think in the sliding in his boot went on to his yeah. in the first instance you go penalty kick but then as usual we get a chance to see it two or three times and that's the way I interpret it yeah oh, totally, disagree. totally disagree totally disagree I thought it was a penalty I thought it was a penalty I thought it was a, st a stupid lunge by Starfelt yeah and uh, stay on your feet. You don't. You you do not sell yourself in the box and fly in a tackle like that. And, and, and unless you win the ball, and he's never done it either. Not an experienced centre half, but he's going back to that bomb scare situation. I didn't think he was great. Mentioned. I didn't think he was great. I thought, he was I thought Callum Vickers had an excellent game. I thought he was Celtic's best player. Uh, Juranovic. <laughs> I thought we had him going to Chelsea. 
absolutely no chance on that performance. No, he was no, dreadful. Not, not on a one game tab. Not God's on a one sake, game, man, but you know, I think you're about. I don't think he's been great for Celtic all season. No, neither. The good World Cup, very good World Cup. But how many times have you seen a player actually get punted? Now I'm not going to give a price because I spoke to Charlie Adam earlier. He's 150 <laughs> grand. Uh, you know, but, have you watched the game on Sunday? <laughs> I? But but uh, but you know, I don't want to. I don't want to put a, a price on him because quite simply, if if the chief executive can get 20, 25 million or whatever, then all well and good. The one thing he 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 has had, Tam, which you can't deny, he's had a good World Cup. Oh, the really good World Cup. And that um, really has but elevated. I think they need to sell him now. <coughs> yeah, quick. You've a really good if he puts world, in any, any more really performances like that, he'd be going like that. He's a really value. good World Cup, and you're worth 20 million. Then the next game after it, you're a dud. <laughs> Well, that's well, that's the nature of a that's the nature of a, a, a you know an old film game, and you, suddenly people change because it's such a high profile game. But as you know yourself, Ruffy, you know, and I go back to our Rangers player that we, we were talking with some of our staff members um, who are Rangers fans, and and, and we were mentioning some players that have signed um, for Rangers over the years. We were talking about a few of them, and I highlighted Oleg Zelenko. I mean, he scored five goals in the World Cup, came to Rangers. Was he great? I spoke to Graham Soonis just after he sold him, he bought him, and he said he was the best player he'd ever signed. <laughs> 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 him and Mikhailichenko. Yeah. That was his two best buys, he said. Yeah. Um, well, there you are, each to their own. Uh, Graham's entitled yeah, to his you, opinion. You touched on the, the selection, the, the Celtic team selection. You know, James Forrest, I mean, you yeah. probably chatted about that. I thought, I thought that was a strange call with the manager. I think that. Uh, when you look at the firepower that Celtic had in the bench, it looked as if he was trying to get to 45 an hour and then bring the big guns on. Jota coming on. Well, what does it say that Juranovic well? is left back after coming back off the World Cup and Bernabe's on the bench? That's another one. Mm. Why would you not put an actual left footed left footed player out there? Uh, Too big a game for him? I would have played Moy as well. I'd have played Moy instead of Riley. I thought, I, thought, I thought Angie's team, I thought it was a strange team selection. They got away with it, they got a draw, but. I think maybe Forrest was in just because he's defensively maybe gave the boy Johnson a wee bit of a hand going back the way. Yeah. I think that was maybe the thinking they'd try and protect him against Kent, but they got away with it. But again, strange, strange team selection for Celtic for me. Yeah. Um, and again, it's all about um, it's all about opinion on it. Um, and Paul, uh, Paul Andrew Martin says, Starfelt didn't have a bomb scare game, Peter. Your attitude on the guy since day one is not awful. You don't like him. You don't like him. I don't think he's a bomb scare. No, I thought, no, I thought, I thought, I thought he had a poor game. No, I have to hold my hand up. I, I think he's a very good player. He's a quality player, but he makes rash decisions. He makes rash decisions at the wrong time. Well, can we just say, and, and Paul, thank you for your opinion on it, by the way. It's, it's, it's one of the things that I think Ruffy will back me up on this. Ruffy, there was a period where I was absolutely at the start of his t period in the team on his case. And then I mentioned to you that over a three, four month period, he started to look solid. And you said you didn't fancy him still. You thought he was a bomb scare. That's the point on it. I did actually, over a three or four month period, say he was consistent. <coughs> it's difficult to change opinions when you make one I think straight he's away. Very, no, I think, yeah. he, I think yes. he, he's very good in our league. But you put him into a European situation and I, I, I don't think he's the same quality. Yeah. I think he's prone to a mistake, Tam. Do you, you want to tell you something? Need, you need a left, I think you need a see, left sided. See, Johnston. Johnston in it right back. Mm -hmm. Then it's Cameron Carter Vickers. Watch in the next month or two. Kobe Yashi, mm -hmm. left centre back, left footed, and then left side will be Greg Taylor. Yep. That's your back four. You need balance in the back four. If you're a centre half and the ball's getting played down the line, you're, you need to be left sided to cut across and, and use. You know, it's, I think it's, I think it'd be difficult to play the other side as a centre half. I've never, never played it. But. And let's not forget, we don't know how good Kobe Yashi is, but yep. he didn't buy him to sit in the bench. I think he bought him and looked for that balance that you're talking about. Yep. Yep, he's, he's a left sided centre back beside Cameron Vickers. Yep. Um, okay, uh, that's from uh, a Celtic and Rangers perspective on it. Um, um, but, you know, quite simply, at the end of the day, I think you've highlighted the point that a lot of Celtic fans rightly pointed out. Kyogo got the equaliser. Celtic came out of there still with a nine point advantage intact. Uh, and I think that was something that pleased uh, the captain, Callum McGregor. Listen, I think. We just look after ourselves. Um, obviously, everybody knows what the league table says, and you know they can they can come to their own conclusion about you know what's a miss win and what's what's not. We just want to do our job. We come here. We wanted a positive result. You know, we wanted to win, but we didn't do that. We didn't play well enough. Um, so it was important that we didn't lose the game, and it keeps us where we were. It keeps us in a good um, spot in the league, and and we'll just continue to work hard and 
you know the games, uh, the season's thirty eight games long, so we just keep going until someone tells us to stop. Okay, um, fairly succinct from the Celtic captain Brian has uh, sent us a message saying um, Cameron Carter Vickers and Starfelt best defensive record in the SPL. Um, listen, I'm not going to argue with you on that, Brian. That's the, the facts are there for all to see. And what I would say to you though, Ruffy, and I'm going to get it in the neck for this next slide, is quite simply, the standard in the Scottish Premiership this season is absolutely murder. We've got managers, top flight managers, who are hanging on by their fingertips, and the football at times is dire. Yeah, well, I was going to say that, you know, how many times in, in the league, apart from, I would say, Rangers and Hearts, are, are Celtic tested? You know, every time I come in here on a Monday and I look at whoever Celtic's played at the weekend, it's 75% possession, it's 80% possession. They're never under pressure. They, they might get a team going to attack them a couple of times during the, during the 90 minutes, but apart from that, they're never backs to the wall. They're never, you know, fighting, their well, fighting themselves out of any situation defensively. And, and the two centre-halves are basically, particularly at home at Parkhead, they're on the halfway line. No, they're actually a midfield in a Celtic team because they're pushed so far up that they're never getting threatened only by a breakaway. But, I mean, they are good defenders, but it's, 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 it's at what level you play at. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. OK, we talk about managers. We will be talking about managers that are hanging on by uh, uh, their fingernails. If you can, um, give us a name of one that you think is the red-hot favourite for... Um, being bulleted in that Scottish Premiership. Which manager's under the most pressure, in your mind, in the uh, Scottish Premiership at the moment? And uh, we'll read a few of them out. It's all about opinions. Nobody likes to see a manager get sacked, but when you've got results that are there, uh, you live and die by it. I mean, we only have to look back at this day in 2007. On this very day, um, Paul Le Guin left Rangers after seven months in charge. Whatever happened to Paul Le Guin? I can remember playing the game that Falkirk beat them. My big mate Mark Twaddle scored the winner. We beat Rangers one nil, one nothing, I think, or two one at home. I think you, I think you get the bullet after that game or shortly after that. Um, good pals with Barry Ferguson, didn't he? Yeah, great mate. Still keep in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whatever happened to him? <laughs> um, so let's switch our attention now because I have to tell you, there's more than a few hibbies are are absolutely hanging on your every word. Now I think we all predicted that Hearts were going to win. I don't think anybody in their right mind predicted him. Couldn't to even, I couldn't even let my, my heart reel my head. Yeah. I couldn't see how he was getting a result. Well, can I just say something, and, and, and it may well just steer you in, in, in a sort of balanced view on this. Hibs did have chances, Tam, in that match, but I always felt as if Hearts looked, you know, as if they were just waiting to pick their moment. They were more clinical in the final third. Yeah, I, I think that the when I mean, you lose early goal like that, it's, it's pure defending from Fish. Um, he's, he's actually coming from nowhere. I don't know where he hit. He hasn't. I'm not even going to. There, was, I'm, a I'm guy, not even, there was a guy no, coming no, there. Was he just couldn't no, think no, one no, quick no, enough. No, no, no. He was. Come on. He was. Yeah. Listen, he, 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 he brought him in for the cold, uh, for the freezer, and, and listen, he was he was yeah. poor and yeah. poor at the goal. If you do a scale gag, I'll be happy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, I think the goalkeeper can can do marginally better as well. He palms out and, and Shanklin scores, but first half Hibs were nowhere nowhere near it. And uh, you know, I think Hearts deservedly went in two nothing up. And then second half, listen, I think Hearts sat back and just you know were quite comfortable. Uh, Hibs had chances, but I mean, for God's sake, Tom, you and he's one on one. Uh, that, that, that's a that's a key moment in the game, and that's, that's a guy who scored I think one goal in, in a in a calendar year. Yeah, you know, and he, he's shown signs that he, he's a decent player, but. Better, better. These guys are going to score goals, and, and he's not going to. He's not going to do it. So there's such a McCurd to get hooked at half time. You know, a guy who comes out looks like a rock star, and uh, doesn't play like one. There's so many problems and issues at Hibs at the minute. Um, Hanlon and Stevenson, two great servants. You know, we wouldn't point the blame at them, but for me, they, they're squad players. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're continuing to play every week, and they're guys that they brought in. Uh, two fullbacks. Miller and uh, Cabraja uh, are on a bit nowhere to be seen. Yep. So the recruitment, that there's huge concerns about the recruitment because well, let's look at them. I mean, here's the thing because I did, and we're going to hear from Lee Johnson shortly. But here are the signings <coughs> that he's brought in, and and talk us through in your mind where it's all gone wrong. 
OK, so we'll start with the three transfers. Cabraja, for me, not good enough. Miller, I think he's played a couple of games. It's hard to tell. Ewan Henderson's not been good enough. McGeady's been injured. Looks, I still think he's he could do something if he gets a run of games. Mars really excellent. Gia Tavares, in my opinion, hopeless. Uh, no in Kenna, not good enough. Uh, you look at the loans, Ewan, not good enough. Schofield's not played a game. Fish, on, on the evidence of Sunday, not good enough. Kukurevich has been good, picked up an injury. Bojang, miles off it, not good enough, sent back. Martin Boyle's obviously been injured. Rocky Bashir, not good enough. Harry McCurdy, not good enough. So, I mean, you're looking at, <coughs> what, one or two out of all them? One or two, maybe? McGeady, Marshall, and, and Martin and Boyle? Before you go any further, who's taking the rap for the signings? Well, I've had, had my say about, about Ian Gordon, about the recruitment, but Lee Johnson's come out and said he, he signs the players. So it's, got, it's on his head. You yeah. know, I think if it wasn't him, he would come out and say, "Listen, listen I'm not signing the players." Well, but he did. He did mention after the. I did ask him about the whole thing. Um, uh, you know, and, and first and foremost, you know, he did say, you know, they've made mistakes. Um, now he didn't highlight whether the mistakes were his directly. He didn't point the finger and say it's the it's the board that have signed this, this, or this, or who makes that final call. But ultimately, the buck stops with the manager. This is what he had to say on, of course, the mediocrity that he's dealing with at the moment. It's not the worst squad in the world. I'm not saying that, that we're a bad team. I haven't lost belief in the ones that I believe in. <laughs> I just think we need to add, uh, add some, some more quality, some better quality, and, and work our budget better. You know, there's a, there's a lot of sort of, um, sort of average squad players really that you that you'd use and, and it's too many you know i'd rather get rid of 10 and sign one um that, that's high quality well but when you say that, that saying, what, what 10 is that 10 that he's brought in or is no, that 10 no, that was just, there before he, he, he got ta- there he's just talking about the overall squad he'd rather get he'd rather get rid of 10 of them i think that's a difficult thing to do slaughter the squad and then think that players are going to be able to to go out and get another club to, to, who's going to buy the players that he wants rid of who, who would buy them? He doesn't think they're good enough. The point, the point I mean, if he's brought 10 of them in, I would be saying to myself, am I going to give you another shot? You bring another 10 if you think they're duds than who? Yeah, well, see that team, Tom. Here's the team. And I would say to you <clears throat> that I only think six players are worthy of uh, being part of the squad going forward. I think as you, I think, I think you can look at Hanlon and, and Stevenson and say they've played their part in Hibs history, so they're beyond for the criticism for me because they're still... But they shouldn't, I don't think they should be playing every week. No, absolutely. That's, that's his fault yeah. for doing that. But for me, Nisbet, Cadden, Newell, Marshall, McGuinness and McGeady um, are the six players that I think are, are half decent. McGeady, by the way, Tam, came on in the second half, and I'm sitting in the press room at the press box, and I looked around. And I went, "He is he when he's fully fit, is head and shoulders above everything in a green away." He's got to start on the next few games. They play Motherwell away, Dundee at home. He's got to start on. There's no point in bringing them on at two nothing down. Yeah, yeah he brought him on against. I think it was Celtic. Don't they brought him on against Celtic? Play him, play him. He must be fit if you're bringing them on. Play yeah. him for the start, but. There's, there's, there's so many problems, you know, another thing that I, didn't, I wasn't too happy about was Lee Johnson being pictured out the night before a game out, out in Edinburgh, drinking. Yeah, but... I understand it can be taken out of context, it can be taken out of context. It's been done in by Hearts fans, for yeah, God's sake. But man. don't give don't give an opportunity to do that, just... There's, there's, there are 364 days in a year ago, don't go out the night before a derby game because you'll get pictured. Somebody will put that on social media, I don't... I didn't he's under pressure at the minute, he's, and he, you don't need to bring more pressure on yourself is what I'm saying, but... He's left his cell nowhere to go, Peter. He's he, he's he's tried the he's tried the carrot with with the squad. That's not worked. Now he's slaughtered the moist to stick. If he doesn't get a reaction at Mother One Sunday, he's got nowhere to go. Yeah, I, I actually think he's starting to talk in riddles at times, Ruffy. But but no. at, at the end, I'm cutting him some slack on one major point. Your point is a good one about well, wait a minute, you, you signed ten of them. Here's my point on this. The best transfer activity that could happen to Hibs in the next six months for me is for Ron Gordon to work out somewhere somebody is going to buy the club. He is a man willing to sell it. And I think all I'm saying to you is there are people who are interested in buying it, whether they've got enough money to convince them, I don't know. But I know there are people that are interested in that club. And the best thing for Hibs 
is for them to move out because I just think the whole structure at the moment is wrong. Well, I, th I, I, I might be mistaken here, but I think it's Tam that told us that Ron Gordon went in there to me thinking it was a money-making exercise, that he was going to make lots and lots of money out of this club. And I think he's found out now that he isn't he. You know, and why take all the hassle? Why take all the grief? You know, why put any more money into it for a start? But I think the manager himself is now looking after number one. You know, the statements that he's coming out with now, he's protecting him. You know, saying this is what I need to do. This is, and he had a wee dig there at the the budget players. Was it budget? We need to reassess our budget. Yeah. So who's he having a wee dig at there? Well, he's obviously who's he's obviously saying there's too many average players earning yeah, big money. Throwing down yeah. the gauntlet. I mean, yeah. by the way, some of the players' wages, Tam, does not merit. You know where they are and what they're contributing. Paid a fee for McCurdy and he, he signed him for Swindon. No, I think he was top goal scorer at Swindon. You know the money in England, League One, League Two, three, four, five grand. He's got he's been on that at Hibs. At least. So, listen, it's not just all negative. And off the pitch, I think there's been a lot of good stuff going on at Hibs. You know, the stadium's fantastic. All the hospitality lounges, big screens. But if the product on the park is guff, then it doesn't matter what you're doing off, off the park. Yeah. In contrast to that, Tam, Hearts were good. Um, and I think when you look at them in that final third, they've got a striker there that's banging in goals for fun. Even, you know, he's, he's at that point this season where it could hit over six or seven players and still drop at his feet, Lauren Shanklin. Yeah, listen, I, I, I've always liked Lauren Shanklin. I've seen him as a kid at Air United in Aberdeen, St Mirren. Always liked him. I think he's a, I think he's a, I think he's a fantastic player. Um, <coughs> his confidence, his tails up. I know he's scored a lot of penalties. I think he's got 15 league goals, maybe eight, eight or nine of them's penalties, but... He's took some high, high pressure penalty kicks and he's stuck them away in Europe and in, in domestically. Uh, gets his cell goals. Captain, I think, would have been great for him at the weekend as well. You know, he was a skipper, so I think he's maturing into a real big player for Hearts and uh, I, think he, I think he'll be the difference. I think, I've always said on this show, once Hearts start to get players back, they would, they would finish third in a canter and I don't, see, I don't see anyone catching Hearts for third. Yeah, 18 goals this season yeah. for Lauren Shanklin and he knows he's closing in on Wee Robbo's record of the last Hearts player <coughs> to score 20 in a season back in 1992. I don't know how big a, how big a player he was for the club and how well thought he is around the place, so um, it is obviously a good thing and if I manage to do it, it will be good for me, so um, aye, we'll see what happens. It's a good record. I mean, he, he obviously just wants to keep plugging away and be Lauren Shanklin. Um, yeah. You know, Robbo, we know. Target, yeah. Uh, he was a great striker. Wonderful. I think Robbo got 15 against me that season. He got 20. <laughs> 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 but no, he had a tremendous season that day, you know, and that year. But no, when there's a time, I'll tell you, when there's a target there that we got, you want the target. Yeah. Because people remember you. They will remember Robbo. There you go, 20. So if he breaks it, good luck to the boy. You yes. know, and every, you know, you want to be up there you, as the supporters love targets as well as, as as well as the players. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck to him. And he's a fairly grounded lad as well. And the Hearts fans absolutely adore him. You can always tell when you're going well when you've got a song uh, for a player, can't you? Yeah, um, I've had too many myself in my yeah. career. But uh, you're right, aye. There's always a, there's always a song. It means we usually get to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which was catchy, I must admit. I joined in a couple of times when I watched you, Tom. Um, but uh, Glad All Over. Um, who sang it? Uh, do, uh, glad All Over, The Bachelors. The Bachelors. Give us peace, Dave Clark 5. So it was. Um, <laughs> the Bachelors. <laughs> the bachelors. Oh, it's Clark his favourite band for the 60s, yeah, honestly. It was my first LP. My first single. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as soon as it's played Glad All Over, everybody jumps on uh, and starts singing Lorne Shanklin's name. Um, always good um, as far as some managers are concerned at the moment I don't think they've got too many songs named after them there's a few managers who are getting that same song that was sung to you Tom <laughs> <laughs> who's, a, who's a favourite I look right now and I read you the rest of uh, the uh, the Scottish Premiership Aberdeen nil, Ross County nil, Kilmarnock nil, St Mirren nil, Livingston 1 Motherwell 1 St Johnston nil, Dundee United one. That's uh, you know the rest of the Scottish Premiership scores. And there's a couple of managers there that I think are going to be mightily worried about the, the second half of the season. Yep, yeah, obviously I think this is standard obviously as Lee Johnson, but Jim Goodwin as well. I think that uh, you know I don't think they're happy up there. I think they've they've lost a real crisis of confidence since since losing that, that, that late goal against Celtic. You know, obviously back to back late defeats. Uh, against Celtic Rangers, uh, Stevie Hamill, 
<clears throat> decent point of the weekend, but they're just starting to slide down the bottom. Um, their home record is appalling. Uh, and done the 80% starting to pick up. So, no, I, I think there, there's a couple looking over their shoulders now, but when I was looking at the lead table, and you, you probably get the lead table up in a, in a minute, but I was looking at the lead table and the Hibs are three points off of fourth place and they've lost 11 games. Yeah. What does that tell you about this, not only the standard of the league, but the consistency of the teams? You know, you, you see the lead table here in a minute. It's, it's so tight, you can throw a blanket over Aberdeen down. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's. I, was, I thought you changed the prediction there. You said <laughs> Aberdeen down. I was about to go what? Um, but it is. It's. I mean, I, I had St Johnston at the start of the season. Off. It's all guesswork when you look at the way they were starting the preseason. I think I've got it wrong woefully because I think Callum Davison has steadied the ship and got a team that I, I thought they were unlucky at the weekend actually not to get a point off Dundee United. They played well, um, but. Um, I'm looking at it now and I, I'm almost certain this month Malky Mackay will get money from Roy McGregor. Needs to. I, I think this is a big month for all the teams because at the end, of, if you wait until the end of the month before you decide then, you'll miss the window. No, so a lot of these managers will be getting out there and saying to the board, look, give me a couple of bob, let me bring in a couple of players and when I bring a couple of players in, if it's not working in the next month or so, then I can hold my hands up and say, if you think I'm not doing a good enough job, then I'll go. I think most of them are all right where they are in the league. Yeah. I, I, I know the Motherwell one, you know, they have one in 10 or 11 games, you know, but I think his, his stock with being a player there is, is okay. I think the next three or four games, if certain teams fall into that bottom two, then they'll be itchy feet, you know, and I'm, and I'm looking at, I mean, I've said Kilmarnock all along. Kilmarnock are picking up points. I do think Billy Bowie will well back Derek it'll be interesting to see if, who he can bring in I think you definitely need a striker there's no doubt about that but yeah. if I was looking at it now I'd be going to Kilmarnock Ross County will be down there and I think Motherwell will slip when, when, when's well. Lafferty back? Well, I, I, it, nah, it, must, it, must it must be through at least six or seven yeah. games at the moment I think they, they need him back or well, they need somebody else back as well but by the way Tom look at it it's Aberdeen St Johnston if St Johnston were to go to Pataudry and take even a point from there, you know, back to back draws at home, you're suddenly saying Kilmarnock are at Celtic, so they're thinking, well, that's a free hit because, you know, they could be on a tanking. Ross County have got Livingston, uh, and it's St Mirren against Hearts, and then it's Motherwell Hibs on the Sunday, and Dun United Rangers. For me, Motherwell against Hibs is a massive game. It is, it is for Hibs because we spoke about it earlier, he's, he's tried to. You know, put an arm around the players and say they're good enough and, and encourage them and he's just he's just lost the rag. He's lost his end his terror, he's come out and just home truths. He's absolutely slaughtered them in the, pre in the press. You know, so he, he, as I said he's tried the cat now now the stick he's got to get a reaction off the players. Because if he doesn't get a reaction on Sunday after coming out and slaughtering them, you know, if I was a player and he's coming out and slaughtering me and saying I'm not good enough, I'd want to show him that I was. Yeah. So I think every single Hibs player should be have that mindset that I'm going to show the manager and prove him wrong. Coming off the back of a heavy derby defeat as well, you've got to come out flying. If they don't, if they come out and then sip it again, and Mother will beat them. But, but, but where's left for Lee Johnson to do? What, what's left for him to do? I was wondering, uh, it, maybe it's an old, uh, an old generational thing, but you said there, if I was a player yep. and the manager slaughtered me, I'd go out and try and prove, mm -hmm. you know, what is, you know, maybe what that's just an old wrong. school. Well, maybe, let's, maybe let's flip it. How many modern day managers have slaughtered their team and the team? The players have said, down tools. You know, I'm talking top level. Mourinho, pff, Chelsea, down tools on them. You know, the players and uh, are I think you'll fickle. Get, I think you'll get away with it once during the season. Neil Lennon was famous for it at Hibs. <laughs> you, 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 you remember an interview after a, a game at Wraith Rovers, I've listened to the radio. He absolutely fell them and he did go on a decent run, but... This is his. This is his last. This is his last bullet. He's fired. There's no other bullets. You know, he's got to get a reaction at the players at Motherwell, or I think he's on a sugarly peg. Yeah. Another thing, Ruffy, could you just write down on the back of a stamp mm -hmm. which manager actually turns round to a chairman and says, "Listen, if it's not working out, I'll go." <laughs> 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 not a catch chance yeah, in hell. Yeah. You'll have to sack me yeah. first and give me my money. Um, listen, what about the predictor, Ruffy? Um, yes. It's getting really tight. Uh, have a look at the After the good, after, after the good <laughs> festive period. Yeah, you have actually, Tom. But uh, there we have it. 168 for you, Ruffy. 163 for me. 156 for Tam. 143 for Tam Cowan. And look at Alison McConnell, last year's champion. 141.
but Hugh McDonald at 119 <laughs> is just it's embarrassing <laughs> isn't it I shouldn't have put him in the thing he's doing my head in he's uh, he's hoping that Rangers going to a poor run maybe get some points yeah can I just suggest something to you can I suggest something to you we are re-signing a player we are re-signing a player to join us on the couch right. shortly should we do a, a, a Gabriel Anthony Atsi so yeah. and blow him out of the water and bring in the other player that we're re-signing no you don't think so no because remember cause that I, 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 want, I want the person that's bottom to be bottom yes <laughs> no offence you, but I don't want to be dragged down into that relegation battle <laughs> the unfortunately the only for, the unfortunate thing is obviously he is a teetotal yeah so we don't know where he'll take us it could be a dry <laughs> it could be a dry meal yeah absolutely well he's, he's he looks grim at the moment there was a period over the festive period just after the World Cup where I thought he was rallying to it all but it's just faded again and he's, he's it's too much of a gap much to the delight of Alison who basically said to us Ruffy if she hits the bottom we better get ready for yeah. the China Buffet, um, which is clearly a, rest, clear, clearly a restaurant or it's in our house yeah. where we're all just yeah. helping ourselves to what she's cooking. I think if she was to have one of these odd good 21 pointers, 21 point Alison could be, you know. Yeah, on a shaky peg. Yeah, absolutely. But she's got a lot on her mind. Yeah, I'm, yeah. She's, had a, she's had a heck of a week, by the way, but um, we're delighted she's A OK. Um, so, uh, you can give us your thoughts. Who do you think is under the most pressure? What do you think of the VAR? Celtic clearly unhappy with that. Rangers, they'll be signing targets. There'll be players that uh, they'll want to hold on to. Some who Michael Beale will be looking at and thinking, OK, your time is up. Give us your thoughts on that. How many players do you think Rangers need? How many players do you think Hibernian are going to get out there? And I did ask Robbie Nielsen, uh, after the Edinburgh Derby, if he was keen on bringing in a few more players, and he did mention Ruffy, he says, "Yeah, I definitely want players because uh, their injury list yeah. is abs." I'm gutted for Craig Halkett. Mm. This time it's a cruciate damage, which he's he's out for the rest of the season. The boy, he's just had no luck. No, I mean he's a super player. You know, can tell when he goes into the the heart side, he makes a difference. I could see that even in the European games when he was playing, they were pretty solid. And then he got injured and they went on a bit of a slide at the time. But it's a big player to miss. But uh, they've got their well-run club. They've, they've got more than most other teams, apart from Rangers and Celtic, to get there and blow whatever they want. Yeah. Um, thanks to Errol Campbell, who sent us a message. Obviously, it's nice when you get full support for re-signing a player. Sometimes they say you should never go back and re-sign players. It can work out. From yeah, it can, it can work um, out. And uh, uh, Errol says, no Charlie Adam, FFS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, unless he's getting the train up uh, to so, Burnley. Well, he's so, in the Premier League. He's landed on his feet down there at Burnley. Oh, yeah. He's in the uh, Premier League next year. He's, yeah. oh. he's on the coattails of company. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Good luck to him. A uh, couple of points I want to make before we uh, finish, uh, guys. Thank you very much to everyone who's posted messages. And incidentally, in the next couple of weeks, I think you'll see quite a lot of things happening at PLZ Soccer. Tam. It's only right and proper that we uh, mention to everybody that you and I are looking forward to Saturday, 4 o'clock, on our YouTube channel. We'll be doing uh, the Saturday football show, looking at the uh, the scores from half-time, yep. and then we'll give it our full-time assessment. We'll get managers and players' reaction to the whole thing. Yep, I think it's going to be great. I think that's going to be unique. I don't think there's anyone who's doing it in Scottish football. Um, obviously, Super Saturday does, the, does English football, but it's going to be purely concentrated on Scottish football. Uh, we're going to be bringing you, you know, straight away the reactions of the games and goals uh, from, from up and down the league. So really looking forward to Saturday. I think it'll be great. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it'll be good banter between you and I. And it really kind of a cements your commitment to PLZ we're Soccer. We're strengthening bond. Well, some people really have decided, no, they can't commit. Oh, Ruffy's not going to commit. Obviously, he's got bowls and uh, tennis and stuff on a Saturday. But yeah. I like an extra shift, so I'll be in. Absolutely. I'll be hope, hope that. that. I'll yeah. be watching it. See your comments on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a worry. Although I have to tell you, Tom, the only rule that you have on the show is <laughs> the only rule. There are two rules. Uh, no taking any tablets if you're not feeling well, because Maka lives long in the memory. Oh, Maka, his, his ankles are fused. Um, uh, you know, he obviously takes painkillers, and there was one day when I just thought, you know, he's just not going to make it. I thought he was going to keel over. Um, and then, of course, the last thing we can have is your wife phoning up to say that your dog has died. 
um, because that happened on one of our Saturday shows and Ruffy yeah. started on the verge of greeting <laughs> on the programme and couldn't even you couldn't even offer an opinion No, it was uh, the point I think it was Aberdeen Aberdeen had just scored and uh, you turned to me and asked for a comment <laughs> And then my other ear, uh, my wife was saying to me that the vet would like to know whether you want to put the dog down or not. Oh, oh it's your worst nightmare, isn't it? Nice. So. It must have felt rough. Yep, absolutely. Hey. Hey. And that's why he's on it on Saturday. <laughs> Correct. Lots of guff <laughs> like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, join us if you can, four o'clock Saturday on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. And uh, we've got lots of other uh, unique uh, video content that you can enjoy if you hit the subscribe button. We've got some very special guests on the way as well. And there's lots of other content that I think you will enjoy uh, on the uh, channel and over and above that. If you download the PLZ Soccer app, you'll be able to watch it live. You'll be able to get all the other content and all the breaking football stories. It's well worthy of your consideration. And if you go on the website, you'll see uh, that it looks sparkly. There's lots of stuff there uh, from European football and world football too. So... We've told you uh, exactly what's on offer, so hopefully you will hit that subscribe button and join the football family. As we say, it's uncensored, unbiased, and, of course, unmatched. It's absolutely free. How many other uh, channels are exclusively looking at Scottish football? And we broaden our horizons as well, so hit the like and uh, the share and the subscribe button too if you can. A couple of things. How the Aberdeen captain, Anthony Stewart, um, you know, the last thing you want to have to deal with is racial abuse, but that's what he suffered as well. It's an ongoing thing. This one came in social media, and I think he's handling it the right way. He doesn't want to speak to the person who's obviously um, just basically uh, had a go at him and racially abused him. I know he doesn't want to speak to them, but I think I'd be reporting them. I think that's happened. I think Aberdeen <laughs> yeah, are taking the yeah, necessary. I, I think, uh, in all fairness, it's nice for somebody to show a bit of remorse, but I think they need to show a wee bit more than that, you know, because it is happening far too often now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Stuart said, um, he did message me on social media, this is the culprit. I refuse to reply to him because what's done is done and there's no need for uh, me and him to speak. Um, uh, there's got to be a consequence, Tam. I, I totally agree with that. Why would you give somebody, accept an apology for that one, straighten you out in, t in terms of racism? No, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even entertain the guy. Um, my old mucker, I uh, always love to see Gary Naismith doing well. He's come in as a Stenhouse Muir manager. I really wish him uh, the very best. I thought Gary was a brilliant player. Yeah, he was, and good for Scotland as well. Not, not got a lot of caps, but I mean, the caps, the chances he got, he did particularly well, and a lot of experience down in England as well. Yep, uh, good lad. Uh, well uh, done to Stenhouse Muir, and hopefully Gary can uh, make a success of that. Uh, Jim McIntyre couldn't quite turn it around at Cove Rangers. They're eighth in the championship. They don't want to be heading back down into League One. And there's even talk that Paul Hartley could be coming back. <laughs> I think that looks, that looks like a stick-on to me. Um, obviously, uh, Paul's had great success there, you know, winning the, the League One and getting the League Two and getting the League One and getting the Championship. I think that uh, I think the chairman was desperate to keep him. And obviously, what he fancied a crack at, you know, English football didn't work out with Hartlepool, but I think he's available, and uh, I, I'd be very, very surprised if he doesn't get that job. Yeah. Okay. Down south, I've been keeping my eye on it. I watched Arsenal Newcastle, Ruffy. And the Arsenal are a, a good side, but Newcastle are the emerging force. Dogged. 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 What is it, seven? Uh, four games, five games without losing a goal? Six, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Basically, 1982. Uh, yeah. If you ask anybody, you know, the success is not shutouts, you know, and, and obviously taking your chances when they come along. My son in law has, I think, a wee bit taking it too far, putting the money to win the league. He's put he's, money on them yeah, to win the league? Yeah, he's a wee bit league. I think he's been a wee bit anxious. Newcastle? Yeah. Wow, okay. well, I think he's been a bit overly optimistic. Mm -hmm. I think maybe next season, once they've started to spend a bit of money, they just need that, they just the boy Isaac's been a big mess. I think he's back shortly, but you can tell that Eddie, Eddie Howe, when he was out of the game, spent a lot of time with Diego Simeone in Atletico Madrid uh, over there and watched him train. You can you can see the influence he's got in that team, and obviously Trippier he signed from Atletico, so they look watertight. But they need a wee bit of extra at the top end. Yeah, um, of course. Arsenal could have got uh, all three points if they were awarded penalties. Arteta thought they should have had two. I'm really proud. The way we played, um, the way we dominated the game, um, the approach that we had from the beginning. 
we lack that spark in the final third to find the opening, to find the right moment, um, an extra pass, and a little bit of finishing quality. But we had a lot of situations in and around the box to to do better. Um, and then, yeah, there were two scandalous penalties. Yeah, wasn't happy to get a couple of penalties. The one thing that they do have is they do have quality on the bench as well to call on. Yeah, they've got a good squad there. Um, they're obviously looking at the try to sign the boy Mudrick from uh, Dinamo Kiev, which would be a massive signing for them. G- I think Chelsea's trying to sneak in. Yeah, uh, he, obviously he, uh, Jesus has been a, a massive blow for them, but yeah, well, that's Christmas for you. Yeah. Um, but uh... <laughs> sorry, Rafi. <laughs> as soon as he said, I thought I've just got to, I've got to join in this lunacy. Um, but uh, elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere, uh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo oh. uh, he's on his way to Al Did you see him giving something back? Yeah. I picked up the papers this morning, and my first reaction was if me and Tam had stuck in, we could have a jet. Yeah. We are, we are back a bed. It's, it? <laughs> it's a brilliant photograph, isn't it? Uh, how the other half live. Um, but quite simply, Man United, I don't think I'm missing Ronaldo. Uh, they're now. The thing they've done getting rid of him. Well, they're now looking top four. Motoring. You know? Motoring. Rashford looks a different player. Fernandez. In particular, a different yeah. player. He's not got the spectre of Ronaldo hanging over him. Casimiro looks as if Casimiro, he's man, you are flying, and uh, they couldn't make the top four yet. Yeah, well, he's he's. Some people are talking about a title challenge. I think Ten Hag's having none of that. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a big step. No, um, we have to go from game to game and get the progress. And um, I think the belief is growing. And that's a good, good signal. And that's um, good to have that feeling. Yeah, um, I don't think he wants to jump in and say we're going to be title contenders just yet. If we're talking about managers under pressure, oh, Davy Moyes. Um, I, I think it's sad that uh, the West Ham's co-chairman David Gold has died at the age of 86 following a short illness. Um, but you know he'll be hoping that the board are going to stick by him. Whether the Everton board are going to stick by Frank Lampard uh, as well. There's managers under pressure in oh, that league. Uh, particularly when you, you start edging towards that bottom three. You know, chairman just owners. They just think the bit of money they're going to lose. Uh, Everton obviously building a. We've we seen it down there when we're down. Yes. Building a massive stadium. Uh, a lot of money's going into that. But David Moyes, I think, has lost five in the bounce. Under pressure as well. So I think West Ham's next game is Southampton at home. Got to win it. I think if he loses that one, I think he sadly Conte could get the will be rubbing his hands going, here's another 15 million coming my way. I'm out of here. Yeah. It's Spurs. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, uh, listen, he's got his own problems there. He, I think he's trying to emphasise to them, look, Spurs are a sixth, fifth, fourth, if that's what you're after. If you if you want to win it, you're going to have to spend to win it. Just before we go, um, we did pose the question on Juventus. The reason I posed that question on Juventus, Tom, is quite simply because... Uh, you know, Juventus, for all the history... They've already been demoted, haven't they, already? <coughs> well, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Uh, you know, there's <coughs> illegal investigations, sporting allegations of financial irregularities, false accounting. These are all things uh, that they're going to have to answer to, especially with some transfer deals and embellishing the value of the club. They're in serious trouble when you get the board resigning and Ned Ved and the chairman. Yeah. Then you know there's problems. And they've, they've already been they already get done for mat, you know, part of that match fixing scandal. They get put down the league, um, and I'm not surprised they're in a the financial situation if they get Darren Ramsey four hundred grand a week. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, whatever happened to him <laughs> uh, and his agent? Uh, okay, so Juventus. When was the last time they won the Champions League, Ruffy? That was the question. Ninety-seven. I'll go for Ruffy. I'll go two thousand and two. What? You, 2002? The Champions League final was at Hamden Park. It was by a Leverkusen against Real Madrid in 2002. I thought it was 2003. Yeah. You want to have another go? That's that the, the no. deterioration now no. starting, you know? <laughs> no. try, try not to put the thought no, in his head, seven. will you? You're, you're chipping away his confidence. Oh, I can't remember. 96. Yeah, they won in penalties against Ajax. 97, I said. Yeah. So, there you have it. Did, did you, you get beat, the, beat the year before by... Uh, Yes, yes, 3-1. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Paul Lambert. Remember that? Remember that? That was 97. 97. Yes, um, that was the year after. Um, but And of course in 95 it was Ajax who won with a Patrick Clybert goal, I think. one nothing uh, for Ajax to win the Champions League. Ah, the joy of that tournament. Love it. Uh, we certainly enjoyed Champions League, Ruffy, and we're going to be back there next year, hopefully, God willing, if all goes according to plan. Brilliant, I think it asked, yeah. 
Yeah, well, well, the, <laughs> brilliant well, if I can go to the country as well. well be great if I go to Britain. You, you will, you will get out of Britain because basically it's guaranteed for any Saturday pundits. Yes. So well, thank you. As that oh, time. Well, <laughs> so Liverpool in a prison in a hotel <laughs> or Madrid. <laughs> I got the shots drop. I mean, honestly, <laughs> did you really want to go to Liverpool that night? They played no. Rangers. I mean, it was better than you and I batting down the hatches and just uh, enjoyed our meal for two on our own in that hotel. I wouldn't have enjoyed Madrid anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have liked it. Too much social activity. Yeah, absolutely. It was. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I what you're going to do when you've got a baby? In it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, absolutely magnificent. And quite simply, uh, we uh, want to bring you as much content as possible with our reporters, Adam, Kerry, Claire, Patrick, lots of other people joining us on the team, and our team in the background uh, working really hard uh, to bring you the best of information, not only digitally with Blair and Cheryl, um, but we've got. Uh, Anne and Sean there as well. It's a great team and hopefully you will hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel and uh, stick with us for the second half of the season and much, much more to come. We're going to give you details of that. Tam and I are on 4 o'clock Saturday on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Hopefully you can join us then from Ruffy, from Tam and from myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. <laughs>